G'day guys, it's Ryan from Sports Science Collective and today I am reviewing a paper titled The Effect of Strength Training on Performance Indicators in Distance Runners uh, by Beattie, Carson, Lyons, Rossiter and Kenny. So this one's about to be published in uh, 2017. So a bit of background, well it's obviously on running performance uh, and in particular distance running performance. So previous research has highlighted that the relationship between VO2 max and long distance running performance is weak, but the relationship between running economy and long distance performance is high. So running economy is a bit like fuel economy in a car. It's how much oxygen we will use for a given period uh, and how much cost is associated with that to run at certain velocities. Uh, an improved running economy has been uh, suggested as one of the reasons behind East African running dominance. So Kenyan and Ethiopian athletes and there are a few studies that show that due to their reduced ankle mass that they actually have improved running economy and as a result run faster. Other than that there have been studies that have shown that running economy can be improved by resistance training. So numerous studies have shown that resistance training leads to improvements in uh, running economy and decreases in time trial time. So the likely mechanisms behind the improvement in running economy are due to the increased motor unit recruitment and muscular tenderness stiffness. So really improved muscle activation and in an effect a bit like an increased uh, elastic effect. So increased um, spring from the ground due to muscular tenderness stiffness. However, there is a shortage of research that investigates the effects of resistance training on running performance uh, longer than 10 weeks. So, of course, uh, with that in mind, the present study asked, can a 40-week uh, resistance training intervention, so 20-week pre-season and 20-week in-season, uh, improve strength quality, both maximum reactive uh, and physiological performance indicators such as running economy and velocity at VO2 max and body composition in collegiate and national level distance runners. So what happened and who did it? Well, 20 participants chose to take part in the present study. Um, of that, of those 20 participants, 11 were assigned to an intervention or resistance training group and the other nine were assigned to the control group. Uh, the training was bi-weekly, so twice a week they did resistance training sessions and in weeks 1 to 20, they focused on max strength. And in weeks 21 to 40, focused on rate of force development and reactive strength. At weeks 0, 20, 40, um, subjects completed three assessments on physiology, uh, strength, and body composition. So what were those uh, assessments? Well, the physiological assessments were submaximal and ramp, so progressively harder in nature. They looked at velocity at two and four millimoles of blood lactate, so submaximal intensities, running economy, velocity at VO2 max, and VO2 max. Strength assessments were 1RM back squat to assess max strength, a counter movement jump to assess reactive strength and rate of force development, and a 0.3 meter drop jump to assess reactive strength. Body composition, they looked at body mass, uh, fat mass, overall lean mass, and leg lean mass. So what are the results? Well, first we'll look at strength. Uh, there's a couple of interesting results here. So the back squat uh, absolute strength didn't change at all between the training group and the control group. But in terms of relative strength, there was no change in the control group, but a 19.3% increase in relative strength in the training group. Likewise, with drop jump, there was no change in the control group but a 12.7% increase uh, in the training group. Now, over in the counter movement jump is where it gets really interesting. So um, there was over here a 14.7% increase in counter movement jump performance in the training group and a 9.5% decrease in the control group. So the control group actually had worse performance in terms of counter movement jump uh, as the season went on. So they lost... Um, some reactive strength during the running season. Physiological variables, so there was no change uh, in either group uh, at sub-maximal velocities of VO2, so at VO2 at 2 and 4 millimoles of blood lactate. 
Uh, and in the control group, there's really no change at all. So no significant changes in VO2 max, running economy, uh, velocity at VO2 max, or body composition variables. Uh, in the training group, there's no changes in VO2 max or body composition variables, but there was a 4% increase in velocity at VO2 max, so how fast they ran at VO2 max, and a 3.5% increase in running economy. So there are a couple of important things to take away from this. So there was no changes in body composition. So that really uh, negates the idea that a lot of endurance athletes have that strength training will lead to increases in muscle mass. Okay, so it's very hard to actually bulk up with that volume of training. So they didn't increase in muscle mass, but they had a stark uh, improvement in both velocity at VO2 max and running economy. And it's likely that those improvements came from those increases in strength. So if we go back a slide here, we can see big increases in relative strength um, and reactive strength. And they probably led to the increases in velocity at VO2 max and running economy, which led to the conclusion uh, that 40 weeks of strength training can significantly improve maximal and reactive strength qualities, running economy and velocity at VO2 max without concomitant hypertrophy in competitive distance runners. There are the references should you choose to do a bit of background reading uh, on that. Thanks for watching.